If you're like me, then you want to be able to ride your bike faster. So we've come to a wind tunnel to test a load of common aero gains to see exactly how much difference they can make. Now, you can buy bling bikes and bling kit, but that's expensive. You can do it the old fashioned way and train more, but that takes effort. So before you do either of those things, using science, we're gonna demonstrate a load of stuff that will hopefully make you faster for free. We're gonna be testing loads of cool stuff today. Some things that you might not have even thought about, but also things like clothing, numbers, and even beards. Now to do this, we've come to the Boardman Performance Center, and we're gonna be testing with the help of Dr. Xavier Disley from AeroCoach. AeroCoach being a company that provides specialist aero testing for pro athletes and also amateurs too. Hi Zab, good to see you man. You too. Thanks for helping us today. Chris has kindly volunteered to do the riding in the wind tunnel. Guinea pig. Yeah, but can you run us through the procedure that we're gonna be doing to test the various things? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount Chris and his bike on the test rig, um, and you can see the big turbine behind us. What this is gonna do is it's gonna pull the air past Chris, which is gonna be transferred to the force plate underneath you, which allows us to measure the aerodynamic drag that you're producing. Um, we're going to be running you at 45 kilometers an hour wind speed. Now we use a slightly higher wind speed just to make sure the data is as accurate as possible, but we can then convert that to wattage savings and time savings at lower wind speeds afterwards. What this enables us to do is to present the data to you at two speeds, 45 and 30 kilometers an hour, and then you can simply choose the speed that's most relevant to you and the riding that you do. So Chris, what's, which one? Well, on a good commute, I can do 34 k's an hour, so I'm going to use that. Cool. The first thing we're doing is getting a baseline measurement of Chris in a standard position, and then we can measure other things against that. Now, many beginner cyclists ride quite a lot on the hoods and tend to not ride in the drops as much or in an aero hoods position. So we're gonna test those different positions, well, Chris's, and we're gonna see how much difference they make and how much time you can save. We're gonna be presenting the results from the wind tunnel testing in terms of watts saved. So to put that into context, if you save 10 watts at 30 kilometers an hour, that's equivalent to a 0.8 kilometer per hour speed saving. And at 45 kilometers an hour, 10 watts is equivalent to 0.4 kilometers per hour in speed. So I mean, what we found was that just by moving your position around on the bike, we got some really, really big improvements in terms of your aerodynamic drag. So if we take uh, a 30 kilometers an hour speed, dropping your position from a hoods position down to an aero hoods position was 33 and a half watts faster, which is absolutely loads. That is loads, isn't it? That is quite a lot, yeah. So what, yeah. what's my CDA then? I love that number. <laughs> <laughs> so your CDA was 0.221, yeah? Which is actually a pretty good CDA for someone on a TT bike. Okay. So um, quite it was quite an that. extreme position you were holding, so I'm yeah. surprised that it was that low. It's the sort of position you would only hold for um, a lead at, you know, two or three kilometers at a time when you're really, really going for it. Exactly. Um, we found that when you went into the drops, it wasn't quite as fast. We often find that, that an aero hoods position, because your forearm is parallel to the airflow, when you go down to the drops, more of your forearm is exposed to the air. Yeah. So it's a little bit slower, but it can be more maintainable. Yes, Because going in an aero hoods position can hurt your triceps yeah. a little bit. It takes the pressure off. Your yeah. Exactly. I guess the take home message would be, whenever you're going fastest in an event or on a ride, the, the most efficient position to therefore get into at that point in time, if you can only maintain it for a short period, is that aero hoods position. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, uh, and when we were in the tops, so rather than hoods position, when you're holding the tops, it was a little bit slower. Um, your elbows went out a little bit, yeah. um, and it was about three watts slower at 30 kilometers an hour. Um, and it's a lot related to torso angle. So the lower you get your torso angle, in general, the faster you go, certainly on a road bike. Yeah. So that really is the big take home, is to close that front, that front cavity that we create. Yeah, exactly. Allow the wind to go over the top of your back rather than hitting your chest uh, instead. That's something we can all do at home quite easily, isn't it? For free. Yeah, it's just training and making sure you can maintain those kind of more extreme positions. Um, but even if you just, as you say, hold the position occasionally, it's still going to speed you up. You don't have to do it the whole time.
Rain capes are great for keeping you dry when it's raining, but what is the aerodynamic penalty of wearing one? They're a lot more loose and flappy than a tight-fitting jersey. And also many riders tend to keep a rain cape on just to keep themselves warm even after it's stopped raining. So we're gonna see what penalty comes with that. Also, we're gonna partially unzip the rain cape and see what happens if it turns into a parachute and also fully unzip it and leave it flapping around in the wind because many riders, rather than completely taking it off, they don't want to stop and they can't take it off on the move, so they, they just kind of leave it on but unzip it so they don't get too hot. Chris has just unzipped his rain cape halfway and you can see that that's causing all the air to come in and inflate it like a sort of parachute and, well, it doesn't look very aero, but I can't wait to see what the data says. Uh, and we found that putting a rain cape on uh, slowed you down, uh, yep. uh, not surprisingly, because it is a bit more baggy and it was 13 watts slower to put the rain cape on rather than just having a normal jersey. Um, when you half unzipped it, um, that actually was interesting. It actually wasn't any slower and it looked a little bit quicker when you half unzipped it. Aerodynamics is a funny thing oh, wow. and sometimes that sort of thing happens. Um, but there was about three watts in that uh, when you unzipped it. It was still slower than not having the yeah. cape on, of course. That's incredible because I would instinctively ride with it zipped up because I would be fearful of it slowing me down. Normally that's what we'd see as well. Yeah. So uh, maybe related to the position you were holding and the, and the particular jacket that you had. Um, but we certainly found that when you fully unzipped it and it was flapping around everywhere, that was um, 16 watts slower than having it fully zipped up yep. and 29 watts slower than not having it on at all. And I should point out, 16 watts doesn't sound like a lot, but when I sat on the bike in the wind tunnel at 45 kilometers an hour, you can feel it blowing you back. That's the fair. extra drag over yeah. having just a short sleeve jersey on. So what happened when Chris took the rain cape off and stuffed it up the back of his jersey? Was he faster or slower? Or? It didn't really make much difference. Um, it looked actually about one watt faster. Um, so not really that much difference at 30 kilometers an hour by putting it at the back of the jersey. So that's not much difference on, on not wearing a rain cape? Exactly. Not, yeah. Yeah, not the rain cape itself. Yeah. So once, you've, once you don't need the rain cape anymore, stick it up the back of your jersey yeah. or down you know, one of the pockets if you can fit it in there. Um, and that'll definitely be much, much faster than keeping it on because you know it's about a 12 watt difference. Even at a modest 30 kilometers. I have the inability to grow a beard, but thanks to Ollie's bag of tricks, <laughs> I do have a costume beard that I'm gonna wear. See if it's any faster or slower. Right, so we're gonna test Chris with a beard now. I don't know if this will be faster, slower, the same. I, I just really want to find out if having a massive beard on your face. I'm just worried about how I look, Ollie. <laughs> you look great, man. I'm That's gonna take a picture. That's all that matters. A beard is faster. Aerodynamics is a funny old thing. Wow. Yeah. Um, so next up, well, we had the beard. I mean, everyone wants to know is a beard faster or slower? Now, beards are gonna be very individual and depending on the position you're holding in things. Uh, we've done you know, some testing with people with beards and we know that having a beard doesn't necessarily make the rider massively slow. Interestingly with you, uh, with your luscious beard that you had today, uh, it was actually a little bit quicker. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. So uh, but that was in the hoods position. I wonder yeah. if it might be different if you're in the drops or in the aero hoods position. So if I want um, to go for a ride on the hoods, I should grow a beard. Yeah, I think so. Right. Yeah. There we go. Well, that was, it was saying it was what, four watts quicker? At 45 kilometers an hour. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, how accurate is that? Should Chris really be getting like some kind of beard graft now? Because he can't grow a beard. Well, I, um, think, I think <laughs> I think the problem is at 45 kilometers an hour, you're not going to be doing that sat up like this. And so you'd, I'd want to do more testing with him in a bit more of an aero position. Um, but it, it filled the gap nicely around your chin. So. Nice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kept my neck warm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you think a, a good thick thatch is the way to go rather than a wispy? Yeah, I think so. I think that'd be more aero. You could, okay. you could, you could gel it down to make it more safe <laughs> as well. <laughs> I think more testing is required on, so. on the front of beards. The next thing we're going to test is the effect of sticking a cardboard number to the front of your bike. Now, many of us have to do this if we do a sportive or another such event uh, for the purposes of timing, things like that. But what is the aerodynamic effect of this? Is it faster? Is it slower? If you've got a fancy aero bike or a handlebar, does it completely ruin the aerodynamics? We're going to find out. It's ruined the style of my bike, that's for sure. Yeah, it doesn't look great. So I'm just sticking the number now 
in a more aerodynamic way by folding it around the head tube of the bike to see if this results in a significant saving. It does look better, I'll give you that. Next up, we're gonna test a race number and how much it slows you down, if at all. But we're gonna test it twice. We're gonna test it first, well pinned and nice and flat. And then we're gonna test it not so well pinned on and uh, kind of flapping around and seeing if that makes a difference. If this is your idea of a well pinned number on it, <laughs> I'm a little bit worried. Wait, hang on, no, I'm gonna, I'm rectifying it, I'm rectifying it. Apparently they weren't happy with the proficiency of my number pinning. So Xavier is insisting on uh, pinning the number on the aero coach way, whatever that means. A little fin, as in like a spine on the number. Yeah. And finally, we'll look at the effect of badly pinning a number. It's a kind of common held myth among cyclists that it can really slow you down if you pin your number on like a noob. But let's see if it's actually true. Great. Then we went for the numbers. Right, so now, first up, yeah, the number, the sportive number on the front of the bike. Now that's a, always going to be a, a really tricky one for people doing sportives because you have to have a number on your bike um, and so you need to know the best way to place it on there. Having the big square number right on the front of the bike obviously was slower, but in this case it was absolutely load slower. Um, and at 30 kilometers an hour it was costing around 8 watts, 8.5 watts. That's a 30. At 30 kilometers an hour, yeah. That's, I mean, that's basically, if you if, well, if you've got a, a fancy aero cockpit on your bike, that's completely cancelled out the benefit of that aero cockpit, hasn't it? Absolutely. If you think about the frontal area of a number like that, it's way more than the head tube of the bike or most of the handlebar as well, because it's, you know, quite a big surface area. So um, I'm not surprised at that, um, but, uh, but it hopefully will highlight to people that maybe placing a number in a better position is gonna be a better thing to do. Yeah. And the next thing that we did... Yeah, my hack, my cheeky hack of wrapping it around the head tube. Did, was that faster or slower? So wrapping it around the head tube um, actually was pretty much no different to having nothing on the bike at all. Um, maybe marginally faster. Yeah, um, because faster. it helps. Yeah, because it helps to <laughs> aero off the back of the head tube. Um, but certainly it's much, much better than having uh, having the number just front onto the airflow. You should leave your number on after a sport teeth because it is faster. Well, if you've wrapped it around, it's only if you've wrapped it around the head tube. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next things we did were uh, pinning numbers on the back of the bike, uh, on the back of the rider. Um, and we found that um, having just a, a pinned number with a few pins on the back uh, was a little bit slower, about half a watt slower, um, which is what we'd expect. Now this was in a hoods position when you were quite upright. Yeah. I think that if you were more uh, crouched over the bike, there'd be more airflow going over your back and then the influence of having a number would be a bit more exaggerated. So yeah. that half a watt might double or maybe treble to a watt and a half. Um, we did a little trick, a little aero coach hack, yeah. where we, uh, we, we pulled the, the edge of the number in to create a little fin off the back, um, and that actually sped you up by a watt and a half. Oh, wow. It's something that we've done for a while, um, and, uh, and yeah, just make it basically extends the, the, the attachment of the airflow off your back. So a pinned number that's done well is faster. Can be faster. Never yeah, knew that before today, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, uh, and then unpinning the number, um, actually in your case, simulated that little hack that we did. So having two pins at the very top of the number and then the back of it flapping was a little bit quicker than nothing at all because it looked like that little uh, fin at the back. Um, but I think if you'd unpinned the top of the number and it'd been flapping from the top down, it'd be load slower. And right, that's okay. we to see. Well, thanks, Zab. That's been fascinating. No so much like, yeah, cool thank stuff you. we've learned today. Um, I hope you found this video useful and informative. And if you've got any mates that have big beards or ride with their rain capes unzipped, then share the, this video with them and, and tag them in it. And if you'd like to watch another video with some aero testing in a wind tunnel, then click on Zav.